Well, good welcome. Good morning and good welcome to the 21st annual LSI. That's Leland Smith Insurance Services Lady Night Invitational Volleyball Tournament here at Crestview. This is opening match. It is 9 a.m. on Saturday morning, our opening match from the Midwest Athletic Conference. The St. Henry Redskins, and from the Western Buckeye League, the Ottawa Glandorf Lady Titans. My name is Mark Shines. My pleasure to do play-by-play -play. alongside Mr. Chris Ludholt. Chris, interesting matchup. Big one right out of the shoot here in this tournament. Boy, the very first match of the tournament, 9 o'clock in the morning, but these girls will play volleyball any time. It doesn't matter. They just love to play. It's opening serve. This will be OG and the big hit by the left-handed sophomore freshman. And this will be bumped over. Here's Whirling to set, and out of the middle of block. And that block is Katie Kaufman, and Amber Miller is glad to have her back this week. Well, this is her first week back, uh, not her first match. She played this week, and that's a good way to start for the Titans. She has uh, been out with a knee injury and has returned. A serve, it is a serve. Chalk that one up to Maya Ellerbrock. She now has uh, 69 aces on the season. Ottawa Glandorf comes in today in the Western Buckeye League. They are nine and six overall, five and two in, and yet another ace. Well, that, she's got that uh, spike approach, top spin jump serve, which at one point in the history of volleyball was the only jump serve. Now a lot of girls use the jump float and not very many uh, use this top spin serve. And here it is again. This will be whirling, and she will set opposite to Mandy Camp. That's blocked at the net, but it's played. Pushed over by the libero. And Kaufman tips to the back row. And somebody's in the net. I gave you the Ottawa Glandorf record. St. Henry is 10 and four. They are three and three in the Midwest Athletic Conference. Well, how about this? Earlier this year against back Bath, Maya Ellerbrock had 20 aces in a three-set match. We almost had another one right there. Whirling's going to set again. And that gets tipped out of bounds. And right away, a good start for Ottawa Glendorf. And we're going to have our first timeout. Chris, if I read the stat page correctly, it said that Maya Ellerbrock had 20 aces. 52.6% of her serves in the match were aces. Well, I, I'm not surprised. I mean, you look how she serves this. That top spin serve is really tough to handle. Uh, she's got two aces out of the five points so far, although the, a couple of the other passes have been right on target. Busher just had, just had one that was right on target. But, again, you don't see that top spin serve very often, and, and um, you know, you teach the girls to shorten up a little bit because the ball is going to dip and to get underneath it and pass the bottom of the ball. But, you know, she has really uh, picked up where Maddie White left off on, on that uh, ace serving. Maya Ellerbrock is a 5'9 senior for Amber Miller. They're on a two-game losing streak right now and obviously here to play three matches today and hope to break that. Here's Ellerbrock to serve again. Our officials today on the floor are R2 is Steve Trotter. R1 is Rodney Stinson up on the platform. Here's that serve again. And yet another ace. Timeout didn't help. 6-0, Titans right out of the chute. The other teams here that are playing today, Decatur Belmont, who won it a year ago and is considered by many to be the favorite again. Here's a good pass. Whirling, hit out of the middle, and they finally get a kill by Mia Niekamp. Also here, Salina, Crestview, Norwalk St. Paul, and Fort Recovery. A bit odd, this is a seven-team tournament today, and Crestview has chosen to automatically play just two matches. This is serviced by Ellie Fallenkamp. Set. Claudia Mag put that over. Set again. And going cross-court was the left-handed freshman, Sienna Fry, and missed at that time. Fallen camp to serve again. Mag. Hit across for a point as knee camp again. Well, she gets her second kill. 
She leads St. Henry with 151 kills before today. 300 and, excuse me, a uh, three, three, six lead, a six, three lead. Titans, here's that left-handed shot again. Whirling sets, and here's Niekamp again, and she gets another point, so. Three kills already. Yeah, well, first six points go out of Glandorf, the next four go to the Redskins. Ellie Fullenkamp, six-foot sophomore, will serve this ball. Overpass, and the setter, Whirling, goes up and gets a kill. So four of St. Henry's five points are on kills. Three of Ottawa Glandorf points are on aces. 41 sets coming into today. Liddy Whirling, the setter, had 20 kills and missed serve. It's our first missed serve of the morning. This will be the libero, Reese Van Oss, to serve. 18 aces for her in the 2020 Two campaign. Knee camp. That's block. And then point. Van Oss to serve again. She's made the shift over to the libero position really well. Just really fun to watch her play. And her serve goes long. 8 6 Titans. Get her. Sub into the game as Molly Wendell will enter to play in the front row, and Lydia Whirling will go serve. 5-9 junior. And there's that kill. You like that left-handed Sienna Fry, don't you? I do. I like those. I've said this so often. People probably get tired of hearing me say it, but I like those lefties over there on the right side. Here comes Addison Bellman to serve, the freshman setter. Whirling, and then knee camp. And we're gonna get, uh, looks like we got a Titan in the net. It was 22, I think, Clara Wishmeyer. Mia knee camp gets to serve. Bellman set and just pushed across by Wishmeyer. And Knee Camp out of the middle missed. That well, was not Knee Camp, was it? That was Chloe Gells. That was it, yep. Gells played in the state tournament last year, of course, as did a lot of these girls from St. Henry. Losing to eventual state champion in Knoxville in the championship match. That serve missed, so we'll make it 10-8, Titans. Well, after the 6-0 start, St. Henry's worked themselves right back in this. This will be their libero to serve. It's Leah Busher. Blocked the net. And then off a couple of blockers' hands, we get a point for Ellerbrock. Ellerbrock's a great player in the back row. She serves, plays great defense in the front row. Just an outstanding outside hitter. Claire Kreischer will now enter to serve. 5'6", senior. There's Gels. And we get another Titan in the net. Eleven nine. as Lauren Tiemann will enter, play back row and serve. Heather Brock. This will be Chloe Gells. And she hits into the block and it comes right back from Katie Kaufman. That's Katie's second block, and I'm sh sure Amber uh, Miller is very happy to have her back. Well, at just nine and six, playing a very, a very challenging schedule, this is a team that's getting healthy, and I would not want to play them in the tournament. 
Here's Gels. That was blocked. Whirling made an effort to it. Not Whirling, but Teeman made an effort to it. Point goes to OG. That's a third block for a point for Ottawa Glandorf. Here's Clara Wishmeyer to serve. But you're right, the tournament, uh, you know, here at the, it's October 1st today, yeah. so the tournament draw is coming up. The draw is on the ninth, and pounding it down the line for a point, Ellie Fallenkamp. And that's her first kill this morning. Tournament draws on the ninth, sectional action, Tuesday the 16th, Thursday the 18th, and then, of course, moving into district play the week after that as Chloe Gells serves. Kill goes to Wishmeyer. <laughs> A discussion with our producer direct guru Ben Reif this week, looking ahead to tournaments. Obviously, soccer boys, soccer girls, volleyball all starts at about the same time, and football playoffs the week after that. So, a lot's going to take place here in October. But really nice serve again by Ellerbrock. At that point, we'll go to St. Henry. Back and forth we go here for a few moments. Well, they're not going to get six points off uh, <laughs> Ellerbrock's serve this time. Ellie Follenkamp will serve. Sienna Fry. Whirling pushes it over with two hands and finds a spot. Boy, she saw that spot open over there. She's in the front row now, so she can do that. And she found that spot peripherally, I assume, through, uh, by seeing that. And uh, a nice kill. She has two kills now. There's Ellie Follenkamp. Fry. Overpass. And this time we get a red skin in the net. Here's Reese Van Ost to serve. 15-12, the opening six points went to OG. It's kind of been back and forth since then. Whirling saves it, and then the push across. Fry. That was Claudia Mag. This will be Niekamp, and Mia Niekamp puts it away. Five kills for her already. Lydia Whirling to serve. Back in the game because Molly Wendell play front row. Santa Fry hammers it off of Rhea Busher. That's her second kill. I think Rhea read that well. It was hit so hard though that uh, she wasn't able to control the pass. Bellman to serve. 514 assists for the freshman this year. Her team has played 50 sets, and that was, it goes long. And Addison Bellman will serve again. And that's going to be an ace. 18-13, and we're going to get a St. Henry timeout. We're going to take a timeout also. You're watching High School Volleyball on WSN. Our scoreboard today at the Leland Smith Insurance's Lady Night Invitational, sponsored by Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. Second time out by St. Henry. They took one, went down six to nothing, and they'll take one here. Addison Bellman will serve. And Van Oss will have to set. Knee camp. Claudia Mag get that ball, and she gets a point. And she gets her first kill. Four girls now have kills for Ottawa Glandorf. The lead goes to six. Tracked down by Morgan Bomber, and Van Oss has to, or Bush pushes it over. Yeah. 
This is Hellerbrock's pass up front. Good point. And tip for a point by Claudia Mag. Really good vision. That was a good time to do one. A fairly long point there. And so uh, sometimes the defense can get lax on those long points. Bellman to serve once again. She's served four consecutive points. Good pass. Whirling will set. And you need a point, you go to knee camp. Well, kill number six. Yeah, knee camp puts that one away in the, in the middle of the floor. And now she will go back to serve. That's a big hit behind the 10-foot line by Maya Ellerbrock. As long as she takes off behind that red line, she's okay. A couple of subs in the game, or not subs, but uh, lineup rotations. Bailey Kraus will enter. It's Bailey's serve right there. Here's Kneecamp. She tips to the open spot, and she missed the sideline. Eight-point lead, Ottawa Glandorf. Kells has to set. He gets hit over by Palmer. Set. Gells tips, but it's played in the front row. Nice job by Wishmeyer. And then the point goes to the Titans. Brock's third kill. You know, obviously, uh, you know, Katie Kaufman has played in, in past years. Is it difficult to work somebody in halfway through the season, two-thirds of the way through the season? Well, it, it can be. Um, you know, volleyball plays somewhere between seven and nine girls, and they know their spots, and they know their substitutions, and you put somebody else in there. It, it can be, but I think she has played before. This isn't her first year on the varsity, so I think in that regard, it'd be quick quick for to just step right in and play, and she's done well. Chalk that block up to Ellie Fallenkamp. I, I, one of the reasons I said that is that, you know, there's freshman setter who has not played with, uh, with her before this season. Well, and that's a good point. Sometimes it just takes a little while to integrate those types of things. Here's a set. And off the Blocker is Ellerbrock. Gels hits this one, and she gets a point. Here comes St. Henry. That's her first kill. St. Henry also has four girls now with kills. Well, and we're going to get a Titan timeout. They still lead by six. You're watching High School Volleyball on WSN. Check out the WSN website for scores, standings, and for more sports and teams than anyone in the state. Check out our broadcast schedule, upcoming games, social media posts, and more. That's at WOSN.TV. So Henry on a bit of a roll. Amber Miller took a timeout. Left-handed Rhea Busher serves. And finally has to be played over by Ellerbrock. There's Gells out of the middle. And she got it going. Kill number two for her. No, she's an outside hitter, but they run that uh, little tandem or inside, inside slide for her. That's a, that's a good play to run. Ellerbrock has to save that one. Tip to the open spot. Busher got to that one. Here's Gels. Gels got to that one. Whirling was able to save it. And nice job. That was Pop a really good up. point. Yeah. How about that play for point for St. Henry? Yeah, it's a great one. Whirling really popped that ball high to give Gels a chance to go out and get her full approach. We've seen a lot of really good setters this year, Chris, and the majority of them have been underclassmen. Well, and of course, Whirling's a junior. Yep. That point will go to Kate, Caitlin Kimmett, and the OG Titans are at set point here in set number one as Katie Kaufman re-enters, and back to serve will be Claire Kreischer. Whirling saves it. That set was by Bellman. 
And Whirling will set Gels. Busher will set Gels again. And she got it in. Chloe Gels is starting to heat up a little bit here. Well, all of a sudden she has four kills. Yeah. Here comes Lauren Tiemann in. Lauren will replace Molly Wendell, and then she will serve. Lauren Tiemann has 20 aces on the year. Chloe Gels leads with 37. Bomber, Whirling, and now Tiemann all have 20. And a little bit of miscommunication in the back row. They have to scramble and dive for it, but the Titans will take the opening set at 25-20. Second set coming up right after this. You're watching High School Volleyball on WOSN. We're back at the 21st annual Leland Smith Insurance Services Lady Night Invitational from Crestview. Our opening match today, Ottawa Glendorf and St. Henry Titans take the opening set, 25-20, and Chris Ludol has stats. Well, for Ottawa Glendorf, they had 10 kills, led by Ella Brock with four. Uh, five different girls had kills, four ace serves. Ella Brock had three aces, all in her first service turn, which got the Titans out to a 6-0 lead. They missed three serves and had three blocks. For St. Henry, 13 kills, so they actually won the kill battle. Uh, they were led by Kneekamp with six and Gales with four. And they had four different girls that had kills, no aces, uh, one miss serve, and one block. Thank you for doing that, Chris. Our scoreboard today is sponsored by Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. And we will go to set second set action here. Lady Night Invitational, one of our favorite places to come every year, the first Saturday of October. Austin Fleming and crew do a great job putting this uh, tournament together. Yeah, it's just a great tournament. Uh, two, two really nice gyms to play in and uh, a lot of good competition. There are just seven teams here this year. They've got a couple of opportunities to bring in teams next year to go back to the eight-team format. And because of that, Crestview has chosen to play just two matches today. Well, and that really creates three holes in the uh, because it, each team plays three times. So that team that's not here uh, ha creates uh, three holes. So, but they've been able to manipulate the brackets a little bit so that um, so that everybody can play as much as possible. And that also changes our coverage a little bit because we're not quite sure who we're going to do in our second and third matches today. We want to do the championship match, of course. But we're not quite sure who our middle match will be today. There's a kill. That will go to Maya Ellerbrock to open it up for Ottawa Glandorf. And to serve, again, will be Clara Wishmeyer. There's a 5'8 junior. One of those people getting healthy this year. And serve goes back to Busher. There's Gels. Good play. Reese Van Oss, Ellerbrock again, and blocked at the net by Follenkamp. Five block. Good coverage by OG. Free ball over. Here's Whirling set, and Gels. And that goes off a hand, and they scramble and can't get to it. Good say Henry Point. Clay Gels will serve. Eller Brock goes long. For the first time today, St. Henry has a lead. We're in set two. Good save at the net. Then the hit by knee camp. And off the block, the point will go to Ellie Follenkamp. We should mention that Lizzie Snyder, the six-foot junior who's been playing a lot of front row this year for 
Coach Trisha Rosenbeck has out with a shoulder injury, and they're going to do an MRI this week and see what the extent is if they can get her back. Well, hopefully that's okay. Mandy Camp gets a point, and here comes St. Henry. It's 4-1. She's got seven kills already. OG had the opening point. The last four have gone the way of the St. Henry Redskins as Gels will serve again. That kill goes to Maya Ellerbrock. Such a good outside hitter. Now she rotates to the back row, though, but we'll see if she can uh, serve as well as she did in set number one. 5-9 senior. And Niekamp keeps it alive. Ball is blocked on the kill attempt by Mag. This will be Mag again, and it will go off of the Titans and be a redskin point. Ellie Follenkamp served this time. Four aces for her this season. Mag tips, blocked at the net. Maya Ontrop was there, so was Whirling. St. Henry's really controlling that net in this set. They came out, uh, that's just the first block for a point, but they've really pushed some balls back over on spikes from Ottawa Glandorf. Not block. that one, though. Yeah, not that one from behind the 10 foot line. That's Hiller Brock's third kill in the second set. Reese Van Oss. 211 digs through 50 sets for her this year. From her libero position. Oh, there's a big hit out of the middle by Maya Ontrop. That's her first kill, so now five girls from St. Henry have kills. Trisha Rosenbeck got somebody's attention between sets. <laughs> They've and picked they, up the enthusiasm they really level, have, haven't yes. they? Definitely. Lydia Whirling will serve this ball. Off the tape. Again, good coverage again. Ellerbrock hits that one over, and then she gets a point out of it. 7-4 as Bellman will enter. Madison Bellman. 5-4 freshman will serve. Whirling sets, Decamp pushes it to the middle part of the floor and gets a point. That's her second kill on this set. Every OG serve has turned into a side out in set two. And Decamp serves this ball. Bumped over by Kimmett. Set Bellman. Yeah, that wasn't Chloe Gell's best swing, but that set opportunity right there was really, really good. Yeah, I don't know if she hit it there on purpose, but it worked. We're going to get an OG timeout. They trail 9-4 here in the second set. You're watching High School Volleyball on WOSN. Second set action has gone the way of St. Henry. They lead 9-4, hence an Amber Miller timeout. Yeah, seven of their... Nine points have come on kills from five different girls. Here's Mia Niekamp to serve. Hits the tape and gets an ace out of it. And Oss was able to play it, but not successfully. That's just the first ace serve for St. Henry today. Float serve. And uh, Busher has to set that one. That goes off a block. Oh, good play by. Well, thought it was going to be a good play. Uh, Hellerbrock kept it alive for a moment, but they couldn't successfully get it back across the net. Seven point lead. The Indy Camp again. Good serve. She chalks up another ace. 
Well, is this the uh, biggest lead of the of any team today? Uh, eight points, I eight believe points. it is, yep. That will bring number 20, Amari Young in, 5'4", junior. Kneekamp had 11 aces through 41 sets. She's got, what, two in this one, Chris? Is that what you said? Yep. Mag. And that's blocked at the net. I think that was Entrop got that one, I think. Had two girls there. 13-4. Very good set going here for the St. Henry Redskins. Kaufman has to tip it over. Likewise from Wendell. Busher plays it to Whirling. And then the kill by Maya Ontrop. That's her second of this set. And we'll have another substitution. We're going to bring in number 31, Marley Buttlemeyer. She's also is a freshman as Amber Miller just trying anything right now to break this string of points going by Kneekamp. And what do we got? The hand went all the way across the net, right? Across the yeah, center I think, line? Yeah, I think somebody crossed the center line, but I didn't see who it was. Seven consecutive service points for Kneekamp, and that also will result in a timeout by Ottawa Glandorf. If you're watching High School Volleyball on WOSN. Today's scoreboard is covered by Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alt. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. Well, seven to three, then seven four, and now it is 15 four. So big run going right here by service of Mia Kneekamp. Yeah, we didn't see this in set number one. Set by Wishmeyer, and then hit out of the back row and rolls it in. Does Maya Ellerbrock to end the string. Well, that's a good way to come out, come out of a timeout. She's got five kills in set number two, but she's the only Titan that has a kill in set number two. So all five of their points have come on her kills. Seven points for Kneekamp on that service. This has been a bit of a problem. OG has not uh, scored off of service yet in the set two. Been side out every time. As Gels hits the ball to Van Oss. Block, and they can't track it down. Was that Ellerbrock got that one? Kim was there so, also. Yeah. And they finally score off of service, 15-6. Service is being done by Bailey Krause. 5-5 five, five, junior. Whirling sets and close. Gels has to wait a moment before she gets to that one. And Kaufman puts that one, or Ellerbrock puts that one away. Kill number 10 on the match so far for Ella Brock. Wow. She leads all players. So we're halfway through set two. Tournaments are three set matches. And when you get to set three, if you do, Chris, it's a 25 point. <laughs> Gels just tips it to the open spot, but Ella Brock runs it down. It's played out of the back row by Kraus. Busher sets. And Gels hits it long. Was it touched? It was not. So now four straight points have gone the way of Ottawa Glandorf. And we will get a timeout by St. Henry. They lead 15 to 8. What questions do you have about life and about God, about things happening in your community or family? Get answers when you watch Life Questions each week. Four local pastors will discuss relevant topics and answer questions submitted by people just like you. Life Questions is on TV 44 Sundays at 1.30 and Wednesdays at 9.30 p.m. You can also find it online on, at WTLW.com. I have to take a break in my voice as we were offered water by the, <laughs> yeah. the staff here at yep. Crestview. Well, they really put a great tournament on that media room that we're going to visit in just a few moments. Well, when this match is over. I can't we, wait. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm going to find who's in charge of homemade meatballs and load know, them up. Yeah, yeah. I have extra pockets in my in my slacks yeah. today. I'm going to load a few of them in there, too. I brought some 
Yeah, your Plastic wife will be bed. happy well, to have to clean those. Well, she'll have to fix dinner then, so <laughs> oh, that's, that's okay too. 15 <laughs> 8, St. Henry. They have taken their first time out, and we're going to get another ace. 15 9. Now, the Titans are on a little bit of a run. Krause's first ace today. She has served four consecutive points. Cut the lead to six. And then she missed her serves. So there goes 16 9. The string is broken, and Rhea Busher, the libero in her dark gray jersey, will serve. And there. A little bit of miscommunication. Elbrock has to run a long way to get it. Yeah, the ball hit the ceiling. Yeah, and then the kill by Fallenkamp in the middle. That's her third. That's the first ball to hit the ceiling. We have a pretty high ceiling here. Speaking of pretty high ceilings, we will not be at one on our Monday night volleyball action. We will be in Temple Christian. <laughs> one of the lower ceilings yeah. around, and uh, that match will air on Tuesday. They're having a good year. They really are. Get a kill that time. Leading the Northwest Central Conference, it is a non-conference match with Spencerville, but a very competitive match we are anticipating. That will air Tuesday evening. Match is played Monday at Temple Christian. Kill? Yeah, I think the point goes to Kimmich. Okay. Yeah. Looking for a call. It's her second kill. Lady Pioneers have CeCe Warsham, one of the best athletes around, and a really fine high school volleyball player. Gels is blocked at the middle by Katie Kaufman. Fifth block today for Otto Glendorf. Titans were down 11. They've cut it to seven. So Henry trying to take it to set number three. And that serve goes long. The libero comes back in. That's Reese Van Oss. And also in will be number 10, Lauren Tiemann, to serve. Big hit out of the middle. That point will go to Fallen Camp. She gets her third kill in this set. Fourth overall. 2011. <laughs> Big hit. Oh, they're going to nice save job. it though. How about that play? Finally pushed over by Teeman. And Ellerbrock with another hit. Gels will hit this one. Chloe Gels gets a point with a big hit. Good defense there on both sides. Gels now has seven kills on the morning. Teeman will serve again. And she gets an ace. 22-11. That's the third ace for uh, the Redskins in this set. Team had 20 aces through their first 41 sets. Her team needs three points to send it to set three. Set by Bellman, and Kaufman pushes it. And that kill goes to Gels. Well, it's amazing how two identical teams can play so differently in two consecutive sets. <laughs> That's just how the game is. You know, we've talked many, many times, Chris. Is there a sport where momentum is more important than Maya Ellerbrock's killer right there, but more important than this one? It just seems like you try to get on those three and four and five and as many points in a row as you can. It's such a momentum sport. And maybe because a team is stuck in a rotation, you can't really change. You can change your serve receive and make substitutions and things, but your your personnel is stuck in a rotation, so you, you don't move until you get that point. Gels hits a second opportunity to hit the ball. 
Wishmeyer sets, and they get a point to, to the Titans. That's Fry's third kill. 23-13 as Clara Wishmeyer will serve again. Whirling dumps it across. Heads up play. Hollerbrock tips it over. Gels. And Gels just pounded that one down. That brought the St. Henry bench alive. Oh, yeah. Fifth kill for her in the set. Well, they all hopped up to see that one. Here is St. Henry at set point here in the second set. Chloe Gells to serve. Fry, shots blocked. Oh, and St. Henry, yeah, St. Henry has a big second set, which they win 25-13, and we will go to set three. You're watching High School Volleyball at WOSN. Set three coming up. Today's scoreboard is covered by Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alt. So that's Structure Outdoor Ohio. Bring your indoors out. Each team has won a set. How about stats, Chris? Well, for uh, St. Henry, they had 14 kills. Six different girls had kills, but they were led by Chloe Gells with five. They also had three aces, and Camp had two of those. Uh, no missed serves, two blocks. For Ottawa Glandorf, they had nine kills, but seven of them were from Ellerbrock. And uh, one ace serve, that was from Kraus. They missed two serves and had two blocks. So we're going to go to set three in our very first uh, match of the day. And uh, although fans love it, the administration's <laughs> not big on having the opening match go three. But, Chris, uh, in a three-set or a, a tournament like this, it is just three sets. But unlike the deciding set in a set five match, they're playing to 25. This will be to 25. Some, You know, occasionally on the first tournament of the weekend there'll be a little bit of confusion on some of the players or oh, some yes. of the fans on whether or not that third set goes to to, to 25 or 15 so it's just to remind um, everybody that uh, the deciding set only goes to 15 when the deciding set is set five yeah a few years ago there was a, a tournament much like this one and everybody made a mistake and they played to 15 in the opening match and they caught it afterwards and it, it was a uh, it was Ooh. awkward. Now, they played the rest of the day then at, yeah. at 25, but it was a kind of an awkward situation. But everybody kind of figured it out after that. But, yes, this one will go uh, today. We'll go to 25 here in this particular set. TV44 is celebrating its 40th anniversary this year, and WSN is a part of that celebration. Would you donate $40 as a thank you for 40 years of local broadcasting in this region? Donate online at WTOW.com or back backslash donate or call 419-339-4444. Looks like Chloe Gells will serve. Momentum would appear to be with the Redskins, but let's see if uh, OG can turn this around. OG well, won the first set 25-20, so Henry 25-13. As we've talked about a few times this year, Chris, you might have lost 25-13, but you're still tied at one. It's just one, you are. one set. Yep. It's blocked at the net. Eller Brock. And Gels from behind the 10-foot line. But played by Van Oss. And Eller Brock again. This is blocked by Camp, And we get missed ball handling error. Yes, we did. Ball handling error on Bellman. Uh, I think that's the first ball handling error of the of the uh, match, and that maybe was the longest point of the match. Ellerbrock. Good play by Busher. Ellerbrock again. Knee camp tips, and she gets a point. Like somebody was in the net anyway, right? Yep. We had Wishmeyer in the net. So Henrik 2-0. With Gels to serve again. And 
a net violation. Three zero, St. Henry. Ball goes long as three one. That's only their second miss serve today. Upcoming this week. On the fourth, Shawnee will be at Ottawa Glandorf, and then their final Western Buckeye League match on the 10th, Ottawa Glandorf will go to Kenton. Wishmeyer sets, Fry hits. Good play oh, nice in the back dig. row. Yeah, how about that by Bomber? Free balled over, Fry again. That was blocked. I think either me and Nick Camp or Ellie Follenkamp, they're both there. Well, I'll give a, black, a, a block assist maybe to both of them. St. Henry, they have Dolphus St. John's at home on Thursday this week. And then on the week on, on Tuesday, the 11th, they go to Parkway on the 13th. And they finish up with Versailles at home in the ever difficult MAC. That point will go to St. Henry. Pulling camp's first ace. Six foot sophomore. And there's her second there's ace. There's another one. Well, the stat page said she had four in 41 sets, and she's got two in two services. Pulling camp again. Wishmeyer sets. That's pushed to the open area by Katie Kaufman. She gets her first kill today. That's good to see. Good to see her in the stat book today. After a serious knee injury, Katie began playing Tuesday, Thursday, and now today. So here on October 1, finally getting some action this week. Here's Ellerbrock to serve. It's a knee camp tip. This will be Mag. Knee camp again. And that was blocked by Kaufman. That's a sixth block today for the Titans. First in this set. Here's Ellerbrock with that jump serve. Gonna move over this time. Gonna change in position. Busher played that one. And then the put away by Maya Ontrop. This is one of those courts, Chris, the baskets on the basketball court stay down, so you really can't serve out of the direct middle of the floor. Well, if you're in front, you can, but if you're yeah. doing that, uh, the, the spike approach serve that Ellerbrock does, she can't. But we haven't seen any girls standing in front of the basket to serve yet today. They like to go back as far as possible. Oh, it's blocked. Fry hits from that corner. Now that got up into the basket. Let's see what the call is. If, if the official determines that she could have played the ball, it can be a replay. Officials decide that was not the case this time, and OG gets the point. Yeah, anytime it hits a vertical backboard or anything connected to the vertical backboard, that could be a replay, depending. <laughs> that shot missed. I have a great story, Chris. I came over here to officiate a match. And uh, Dave Bowen, who is now the, uh, the principal here, said, hey, look up on that black support to the basket. There's a bat hanging up there. A, a bat, like a, like a flying bat. <laughs> so All right, we so kinda, what's the rule? Uh, well, we tiptoed around that. There's a block for a point. We tiptoed around that for a while, and we looked up, and we studied it, and Dave Kamara says, I think it's a streamer left over from homecoming. <laughs> So if it hits that, it, it bounces. It, yeah, I wasn't sure what the rule was on hitting a bat. But for a while, we tried to be kind of quiet about it. And Oh, how about that hit out of the middle by Mia Niekamp? That's her 10th kill. I'm not sure what Dave is uh, more, more famous for. Uh, you know, the principal here, a JV basketball coach for a long time, or being the voice of the Wren Wiffleball Tournament. <laughs> he and Patrick Kamler every Fall here. Fry hits that one and she gets a point. 
Where was that wiffle ball tournament when I was 12 and playing well, uh, wiffle ball every day? The Wren Wiffle Ball Tournament is one of those small-town America things that is just a great event. Here comes number 12, Addison Bellman, in play back row and serve. And she will set from the back row as well. Eight seven in favor of St. Henry. And that kill goes to Molly Wendell. That's just her second kill. Nine seven. St. Henry has been ahead the entire third set as Rhea Busher serves. Here's that Bellman set. And a, kind of a miscommunication. The ball falls to the floor. Diving attempt. You know, Bellman had to go off the court yeah. to set that. And uh, uh, maybe it wasn't set high enough for somebody to, to be able to get a, a approach on it. Sarah Wishmeyer went a long way for it, but couldn't make a play on it. And then off a blocker goes point for Caitlin Kimmett. It's her third kill, one in each set. This will bring Bailey Kraus in to serve. Gels hits it over, but hits it out of bounds. 10-9. She'd like to have that over again. Good serve. Bailey Krause serves one of those balls that just kind of eats up the receiver. That's her second ace. And we are tied at 10 here in set number three. Gels off a blocker. Here comes Busher to set. Good play by Bellman. And then good effort in the back row by Brianna Mangin, but she couldn't get it. And for the first time in this set, OG's ahead 11 10. And Bell, uh, Ella Brock now has 13 kills. Gels hits. Saved by Ellerbrock. This hit will be by Wishmeyer. Gels again. Another good play by Ellerbrock. I think that block was by Kimmett, I think. Ellerbrock was there also. That's the eighth block for the Titans. Well, when you put Katie Kaufman in at 6-1, Ellerbrock is 5-9, gets off the floor really well. Kimmett's 5-11. Point goes to St. Henry. They've got good size across the front line. Of course, Gels is 5-10, Niekamp 6 foot. So they've got some size on the other side as well. My Ontrop is 5-10. This is Teeman to serve, 5'5", five, five, Sophomore. Remember when 5'8 used to be tall? I do. And I also remember in a time period when, unfortunately, ladies would never admit to being six foot tall. <laughs> you saw a girl in a basketball program, volleyball program of 5'11 and a half, you knew she was over six foot. Yep. And congratulations to ladies that get rid of that stigma. Yep. Ellerbrock. Gels, that's blocked. There was Kimmett. Well, that made up for all the boys on the basketball team that were 5'11", but, what, but oh, got yeah. listed at six they foot. They were so all balances you're out. exactly right. Coach, um, why do I I'll have to get measured in my bare feet? Because <laughs> that tells you how tall you are, but I play with my shoes on. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> That ball gets hit long. We're tied at 13. No, it's 14-12. I misread the scoreboard. OG serves again with a two-point lead. Gels pushes the ball, but she pushes it into Bellman. Kaufman sets. Here's Gels. She tips. 
And Ellerbrock hits, but she hits the right of the team. And good point. And did Gellis get that to drop in? Yep. Wow. A lot of overspin on that one. There was. Yeah. That's her 10th kill. And the reward for Chloe Gells is she gets to serve. Well, they don't really lose anything in the front row because Niekamp comes in and plays that outside position. She's got uh, uh, 10 kills as well. Try to keep those two opposite, don't they? Yep. Yeah. Nice. Ellerbrock tried to tip it for a point, but a good heads-up play by Tiemann. Just free balled over. Here's Niekamp. And she tips. Ellerbrock dove for the ball. I got an illegal contact on the ball, though. They're tied at 14. I was watching Ellerbrock. You know, only your hand and feet can go across that line. She did a nice job of lifting up her arm to prevent. I thought maybe the call was that she was under the net, but. I did, too. Pushed to the back row where Gels goes and gets it. Here's Niekamp again. And Niekamp wins the joust at the net. Puts her team up 15-14. Really good third set of action here on the opening of the Lady Night Invitational. Gels to serve. And a good oh. push. That was, that was Ellerbrock. Ellerbrock, yeah. yeah. 14th kill. She did so with her fingertips and not prolonged contact. That was a very impressive thing yep. by the senior. Clara Wishmeyer to serve. Overpass and put down by Ellerbrock. For recovery in Dayton Belmont are in our second match here in this gym today. And in the other gym, Salina and Norwalk St. Paul are matched up as we speak. We'll have to sort out through the course of the day which matches we can cover on WOSN. So stay tuned when this one comes to an end. Here's Fullenkamp serve. Wishmeyer will set. And Niekamp hits this one and hits it long. Was it touched? It was not. Kind of look to see if it changes angles or not. It I wasn't quite sure whether anybody touched that to a net or not. You watch the ball and see if it changes angle. Sometimes you can't see the contact, but you can see the deflection makes the ball change. Well, and sometimes it's easier to see at our distance than it is yeah. when you're up on the stand. That is absolutely right in front true. of you. Yeah. Tip by Mag. Block. That's going to be a point. Whirling was there. Also, my Ontrop was there. We're tied at 17. That was a nice block. A, a a uh, slow hit ball is harder to block. It's harder to time. That's uh, St. Henry's fifth block today. Lydia Whirling gets to serve this ball. Back set fry. They're not used to Sienna a lot today, but she is very effective when they think of that part of their offense. Just a freshman, and she has five kills. Kind of nice to have a six-foot freshman on your team, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. lefty, lefty too. Lefty. I think yep. I think what we got going for the next three and a half years. Knee camp hits. Ellerbrock has to play. I wish my runs it down, but the pass is over. Whirling sets, and it'll be pushed over by Wendell and illegal contact. I was watching Fry on that block there. She gets her elbows above the top of the net. I'd like to know what her vertical reach is. St. Henry trails by two here in set three, and they take the first time out of the set. You're watching High School Volleyball on WOSN. Season 18 of the Sports Report. Every Friday night, you can join Patrick Kammerer for a full hour of the most comprehensive football coverage around all season long. It's Friday at 10 p.m. on WTLW. So Henry takes the first time out here in set number three. They trail by two to the Ottawa Glandorf Titans. As Reese Van Oss, Van Oss will serve. Yeah. 
Whirling sets. And Niekamp, as she has done so often in her career, comes out of a timeout and scores a point for her team. It's her fourth kill on this set. The Niekamp will serve. As we've talked about rotation-wise, that puts Chloe Gells in the front row. Good serve. Wishmeyer sets. Mag hits. Busher has to set this ball, and Niekamp hits from behind the 10-foot line and ties it up. Man, Niekamp. Well, we'll play to six. Well, Dad's in the front row, got a big smile out of that one. <laughs> One of our WSN friends that we have. He can't serve that one. This will be Ellerbrock. And from behind the 10-foot line, she puts her team up. She's got five kills. She might have five kills from the back row on the day. Addison Bellman will enter. Chloe Gells, and Chloe hit it long. No touch. Looked at all, all four people, looked at two line judges and two officials, nobody had a touch, right. so two-point lead Titans. Trying to, trying to get to the semifinal match. And they're gonna have to free ball it over. Whirling sets. Hello from Chloe Gells. Good play, though. Good dig. Ellerbrock hits it. Out. 21-20. OG, uh, excuse me, uh, St. Henry led 6-1 at one point, and it has been back and forth ever since. This will be Gells again. Kind of mishit that one. Kaufman tips to the middle of the floor. No, Kimmett tips to the middle of the floor and scores. She picks up her fourth kill. 22-20. <clears throat> In to serve will be Bailey Krause. She's got two aces on the day. Gels. And she bangs it into Reese Van Oss for a point. Well, the outside hitters for St. Henry are just so good. I just enjoyed watching them play in the state tournament last year. And uh, the team con continues to really set those two as many times as possible. Lauren Tiemann will serve this ball. And she gets an ace as she rolls it across the tape. Tied at 22. And she's got two aces today. This time... Ottawa Glandorf takes a timeout. We're tied at 22. You're watching High School Volleyball on WOSN. We're back at Crestview, where the scoreboard is covered by Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alt. So that Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. And we are tied at 22 in set three, trying to get to the semifinals of the Crestview and Lady Night Invitational. Lauren Tiemann serves. Each team has called a timeout. That's what I do. I go to... Ellerbrock coming out of a timeout. Right back to Gels, and she tips, blocked. Whirling just pushes it over. Van Oss sets Ellerbrock again. That ball's played, though, by Manjin. Whoa. A lot of Sandra people wanted a miscontact on the ball. It's free balled over. Sandra's going to get a chance. Gels. Bellman sets. Ellerbrock shots blocked. Good point. Ellerbrock again. Gells again. This time she has to tip it. Ellerbrock hits the ball to Busher. And Gells bangs it off a blocker for a point. That was really a good point. That Both was sides. a really good point. 23 22, St. Henry. Again, Lauren Tiemann will serve. Wishmeyer tips it over. Gels. 
Oh, blocks blocked to the net. Whirling is there. So is Fallen Camp, and they double up to block it. And another OG timeout as they trail 24 22. That's some really outstanding points here with the match on the line, Chris. Well, there are, and uh, both teams playing pretty good defense. Both teams are out of system a couple times on that one really long point and were able to keep the ball going and get a good hit. Just fun to watch. As we mentioned a moment ago, in the other gym right now, Salina is playing Norwalk St. Paul. The winner of this match will play the winner of Salina and Norwalk St. Paul in the semifinals. And again, we're... Uh, Trying to figure out which matches we can cover here today at WOSN. So stay tuned when this one comes to an end. Right now, St. Henry is trying to close out this set and get to that semifinals. Here's Teeman to serve. OG has burned both of their timeouts. Back set, and I think we got a red shirt in the net. Yes, we do. Now, everybody in the gym probably thought that ball was going to come to Ellerbrock, including yes. St. Henry. So it was a, that was a nice job to set that ball over there and show some confidence in the right side hitter. I'm all set to announce here comes Ellerbrock, and yeah. they back set it. So, but there was a red skin in the net. So service trying to tie it up, and they do with an ace. That was very close. Ottawa Glandorf has consistently served that ball deep toward the back line and made tough decisions for the Redskins on whether to play it or let it go out if Kate, it is out. Caitlin Kim had picked up a great time to pick up an ace, and her ace ties it at 24. And so we get the final St. Henry timeout of this particular set. And I mean, Chris, this, that was a two point match now. You got to win by two. Got to win by two. TV44 and WSN are non-profit organizations supported by viewers like you. Now's a great time to make a donation of any size as a way to say thank you for this sports broadcast. Go to WTOW.com and click Donate here. Donate or donations are accepted 24 hours a day. Just visit WTLW.com. You know, Mark, in Michigan, when they play uh, best of three, yeah. they have a 27-point cap. Really? And a 17-point cap on... They only go to 15, but 17 points. So you can win 27-26 We've had a couple. Michigan. We've had a couple 20, 30-28 sets this year. Not in the deciding set, however. Going to go to Gels. He's a long way off the 10-foot line, and Chloe still scored. 25-24 St. Henry. It's her 13th kill. Yeah, Kneecamp enters to play front row, and Gels goes to serve. So Henry trying to lock it up. OG looking at the side out. There's Ellerbrock. There's a point. That's her 17th kill in this match, and she leads all players. Sienna Fry enters as Clara Wishmeyer heads to the back row to serve and to set. And she served it long. 26-25, Redskins. It will be Ellen, Ellie Fullenkamp's turn to serve. Ellerbrock pounds it down. We're tied at 26. And Ellerbrock now goes to the back row, and Maya will serve. Pretty good time. They're the jump server back there. That's a spike approach serve, Chris. Yeah, it is. Tied at 26. And well, Whirling tracks it down after Busher's play. Back set to Fry. Point. OG a point away from moving into the semifinals. And Fry now has six, uh, six kills. They have come all the way back from trailing 6-1 early in this set and a chance to win it in advance to the semis. Knee camp. It's out. She went to the sidelines and missed the sidelines. 
That had to wait a long time from our vantage point. Looked pretty good. Either way, OG will take this three-set victory. OG won the first set 25-20. St. Henry won the second set 25-13. And then in a very exciting and well-played third set, Ottawa Glandorf will win 26-28. That means they will play the winner of Salina and Norwalk St. Paul. And uh, I'm not sure, but I saw Salina, young lady, sitting on the far side of the gym. I kind of wonder if they weren't the victors. We'll have to kind of clarify that as we go along and see which matches we can provide for you for the rest of the day. How about stats, Chris? Well, for Ottawa Glandorf, uh, they had 33 kills on the match and seven ace serves. They were led with, by Ella Brock with 18. Coming in second was Fry with six. And uh, they did have uh, seven missed serves and nine blocks. For St. Henry, they had 38 kills, uh, six ace serves. They were led by uh, their outside hitters, uh, Gels and Niekamp. Um, Niekamp had 13 kills, and Gels um, uh, also had 13. And they had uh, two missed serves only, so good serving day for them. And they do serve tough, and uh, six blocks. Thank you for keeping our stat numbers, Chris. In the background, you can see Fort Recovery and Decatur Belmont warming up as this volleyball match will continue throughout the day here, and we have more matches coming up for you on WOSN. We want to thank our crew today, Megan Sherrick and Lexi Waddle. They will have done the camera work, audio work. Nick Fraley will edit this back at the station. We're going to thank Structure Outdoor Ohio for sponsoring our scoreboard. So Henry wins and moves into the semifinals with a three-set victory. Ottawa Grandorf wins with a three-set victory over St. Henry. we got more volleyball coming up, but you're watching High School Volleyball on WOSN. Good afternoon and welcome to Crestview, the 21st annual Leland Smith Insurance Services Lady Night Invitational. You're about to watch the consolation match today, the match for third and fourth place. On the left side of your screen in the gray uniforms with dark blue trim are the is Decatur Belmont. Their head coach, Craig Crawl. they are 21 and six on the season. They started this tournament today with a win over Fort Recovery and then a very thrilling two-set loss to Crestview in the semifinal match. Hits their position here. On the right in the white uniforms, also blue and gold trim. That would be the Ottawa Glendorf Titans, Amber Miller's team. They are 10 and 7, and they got here with a huge three-set win over St. Henry and then a loss to Salina in the semifinal match. My name is Mark Shine. It's my pleasure to do play by plate alongside Mr. Chris Ludholt. Chris, Ottawa Glendorf sat around for a little while. On the other hand, Belmont had a really tough loss just a few moments ago. Kind of interesting how the mentality comes when we get into this match. Yeah, and, and they did give them a little bit extra time in between there, which maybe Belmont would want, but maybe Ottawa Glandorf would not want. But they did give it a little bit extra time, so we'll see if that factors into this. I know that neither team wants to walk out of here with one win and two losses. So there's a, even though this isn't the championship, neither team wants to, to uh, end up with that two losses today. So there's, there's good incentive today to play hard. OG will serve first. This will be Clara Wishmeyer to do service. Our R1 today on the stand is Steve Trout. On the floor is Rodney Stinson, R2. Opening serve by Wishmeyer, and it's going to be free balled over. Wishmeyer sets. Tip by Fry. Boy, they keep it alive over there with Libero, Sammy Kristen. But the point will go to OG. Wishmeyer's second to serve. And then a big hit. That comes out of Delaney Lawson, a 6'1 junior. And we're tied at one. She might get a lot of kills today, Mark. I remember her from last year. She's an excellent 6'1 outside hitter. And Belmont only has two seniors on their team. Cadence Lowe's will serve this one. I want to get back to that in just a moment. That's tipped by Kaufman. And then free balled over by the setter, Lauren Ross. And there's, there's a hit. Is that Kaufman over there? That is Ellerbrock, Ellerbrock over she there. She gets yeah. her first kill. 
She had 18 kills in our opening match today. Miller Brock, 5'9", senior, who will serve this ball. And there's a play by the setter at the net, Lauren Ross, and she puts that one away. We're tied at two. The uh, set was, a, excuse me, the pass was a little bit high. So she's a front row player there, so she can knock it on over. She gets her first kill. This is Lauren Ross to serve. You mentioned just two seniors, but when one of them is your setter, as we have right here, that's a good thing. Yep. A lot of experience on the floor in that position, and she will get an ace. Although, Mark, we have seen some outstanding underclassmen setters this year in our area. It doesn't it seem like every match we've done, one or both setters are underclassmen yeah. and extremely talented. Here's Ross to serve again, 5'8", senior. Wishmeyer sets. There's Fry. And then from this corner is Mary Kay Schumann. And that ball rolls along the net and falls in. We're going to kill for Katie Kaufman. It's her first kill. As we mentioned in our opening telecast today, St. Henry and Ottawa Glendorf. Good to see Katie back on the floor after that knee injury that kept her out for all of August and most of September. Started playing again this week. This is her third match back as Reese Van Oss will serve. Back set to Lawson. That point goes to Lawson comes out. We're tied at three as that point went to Belmont. At first I couldn't see which side of the net that ball landed on, but it did land on the OG side. This is service by Katie Mills. And then a roll shot by Buttlemeyer. And free balled over set. Tip by Schumann. And that ends up being a point. It's 4-3 Belmont. All three of their points are on kills. Talk with Coach Crawl a little bit. In uh, Indiana, you're allowed to play 31 matches in the course of a season. Is it 22 in Ohio? 22, regular season. And yep. the ball stayed alive up in the ceiling, but it was out of play. Over, unplayable area over top the OG bench. And they're starting to move their bench back now so they can get more ceilings back. Now, can a team do that? Can they move their bench way back and five feet? It is supposed to be in line with the scores oh, table. Okay. Now, will somebody enforce that or not? That would be an interesting question to ask. Of course, not that I would ever have done anything well, like that. Of course not. Fry. This will be set by the libero. And then put away on a big hit by Sutter. Suter. And it is 7-3, and OG with a timeout. They trail 7-3. Back in a moment, you're watching High School Volleyball on WSN. Today's scoreboard is covered by Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. And we did some investigation between matches today. Belmont ladies have the word squaws written across the back of their jersey. Their female teams used to go by that. They now go by the same title as their male counterparts, the Decatur Belmont Braves, but they still have uniforms that say squaws on them. So take your pick which you choose to use today. OG trying to score out of a timeout, and instead there's a kill by Suter. 8-3 Belmont. She picks up her second kill. Service by Mills. And that kill attempt misses. That was uh, Caitlin Kimmett who missed that one. I had to wait till everybody moved out of my way so I could see who hit it. Ellerbrock had to play that one. Fry blocked. And that will be a point. At the net was Jackie Suter. And that's our first block today, or at least in this match. Block for a point. It's tied at three. The last seven points have gone the way of Belmont from Decatur, Indiana. There's Kimmett with a hit. Back set. And there's the kill we can chalk up to Mary Kay Schumann. 
Looks like uh, the Belmont Braves have come out a little bit uh, unhappy with losing their semifinal match, and uh, they are playing well right now. And that goes into the net as I say that. It's 11-4. <laughs> the Mark Schein jinx. Yeah. That's happened many times before. OG has gone side out in their first four, first three serves. Let's see what happens on serve number four. Ellerbrock chases it down. It's pushed over by Buttlemeyer. Buttlemeyer's going to get another chance, and the freshman hits that one to the libero. And a good block. There's a play by the libero, however, Kristen. And they free balled over. She kept it alive for him. Ooh, and that's block. block. Yes, it was. Well timed by Alyssa Gumbel, 5'9", freshman. And again, OG goes side out. It's 12-4. Championship match to follow. That will be Salina and Crestview. Block. Ball's played by the setter, Ross. There's a tip across. That one's played well by Bellman. What a dig. That yeah, was, how about that? That was Schumann laying on the floor. Been a good point. And a long point. Here's set by Van Oss. Buttlemar hits it. Van Oss plays it over. Out. Good point, OG. That was. That was a good point. I talked with the Norwalk St. Paul coaches five years ago. They played the single longest point I have ever seen. We took it back to the station. Re-edited it, re-looked at it, and ran a clock on it. It was one minute and 40 seconds. Wow. Did she remember that? And she did. We discussed it a little bit. Just, just first of all, a lot of routine plays that were well done, but then big play after big play, and that came against this uh, OG team back five years ago in the championship match. Well, there's another big play. Good play in the back row that time. Number 13, that was Kraus played that one. Bailey. And there's a big kill by Mary Kate Schumann. Well, Mary Kate Schumann really has a good right side arm swing on that. I, I, she just does extremely well. Some arms are just built to just hit on that opposite side, and, and she really has a good swing. It's her third kill. 13-5 as Schumann serves. Ellerbrock shot blocked. She could get another opportunity. And tried to roll around the net, and it just went a little too far. 14-5 in favor of the Braves from Decatur. Mary-Kate Schumann serves again. 5-9 freshman. Good job by Wishmeyer to run that one down. Tipped over. Good play by the setter, Lauren Ross. She's got two kills. Team is up 10. OG has already taken one timeout in this set. At 7-3. Ellerbrock. That's played by the libero, Kristen. Kimmett out of the middle. Ellerbrock again. And what do we got? Looks like we have a Belmont Brave in the net. Yeah, the net's still bobbing up and down. Makes it 15-6. Uh, and that will allow Clara Crusher to Clara Kreischer, excuse me, to step in and serve. She wears number 10, 5-6 senior. Ross sets, and it goes long. Belmont thinks there's a touch, and nobody has it. Yep. So for the first time, the Titans score in service. If you're looking straight across the court, you can see Salina is in the opening. A couple of rows of the bleachers here. They will play in the finals in a few moments. 
Over pass, look out. And there's a kill at the net. That goes to Maya Ellerbrock. That's just her second. If you're going to overpass, don't do that yeah, in front of her. Don't do it there. Yeah. On the baseline, down by our camera person, Lexi Waddle, would be the Crestview Knights. Their coaching staff is in front of us. They're looking to the finals in a few moments as well. That ball rolls across the net. We get an ace. Well, a few points in a row here for OG. If you, mm. you know, I said many times, if you can't win the set, at least get some momentum into the second one. They have scored four consecutive points to get it to this 15-9. There's an overpass. And dumping straight down with a shot is Katie Kaufman. Talk to Katie's sister, Erin. She's here, huh? Yep, she's here. She's going to Malone University. Talk to her for a few moments. Good school. Set. Ellerbrock shot. Goes up into the rafters, and they're going to keep it alive. In fact, they're going to get a kill attempt by Suter. Katie Kaufman pushed that. There's your left-handed setter hit. 16-10. Ross has three kills now, and she leads all players, although she is tied with Schumann with three, but unusual for the setter at this point to lead in kills. I reminded Aaron Kaufman at the district basketball tournament last year. She was one of my first young ladies to interview, one of my first student athletes to interview, and it was outstanding. And Does she remember that? She did for a fact. Yep. And her parents were there and uh, served a short right there, 16-11. She did. And uh, she was an extremely well-spoken young lady. It was a great interview last year. Wishmeyer well, serves. She set the bar pretty high then for the student uh, interviews, right? she ever. Of course, we're trying to do more and more of that at WOSN, get a coach or a player's interview. Ellerbrock hits. Dumped across by the setter. Ellerbrock again. And this time she gets a kill as she hits it through the libero, Sammy Kristen. OG creeping back into it. What had been a 10-point uh, deficit is down to four. How about that? Your setter goes up and wins a joust at the net. Block or a kill? Uh, well, uh, yes, that's exactly <laughs> what it was. <laughs> Lauren Ross went I, up. I gave her a block. For a point. There's service by Cadence Lowe's. Kaufman pushes. The kill attempt was by Lawson. And just kind of bumped over by Fry. How about the heads-up play that time by Lauren Ross? Very smart. Used that left hand and hit it to the back row where she got a big smile on her face, too, where nobody was at. And, oh, geez, second time out. They trail 18-12. You're watching High School Volleyball on WSN. The free WSN Scores app is the easiest way to follow local high school sports. No one covers more schools, more sports, and more scores than WSN. Search WSN in the App Store or Android Play Store. Decatur Belmont. Coach Craig Crawl, his team come in at 21-6 and six today, and they have taken an 18-12 lead here in our consolation match. Wishmeyer tips, and back row attack. Yes, it is. Yep. Back row player cannot contact the ball above the height of the net from inside that 10-foot line. And return it to the other side. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. Just add that as well. Tip. Good place wow, for the nice ball dig. by yeah, Ellerbrock, but it was a nice dig. Kaufman out of the middle. It's going to be set by Selking. And it doesn't get you know, over. What happened there? Just a yeah. little communication. You know, whose ball is it? 19-13. Buttlemeyer will enter as my Ellerbrock goes back to serve. If you missed our opening match today against the Bath Lady Wildcats, she had 20 aces. In fact, almost 53% of her serve attempts turned into an ace against Bath. Here's Lawson's third kill. 2013 in favor of Belmont. 
service by Ross. Buttlemeyer hits and rolls it across. This will be set for Lawson. She hits it to Van Oss. Fry. He's out. Boy, Mary Kate Schumann had uh, eyes like saucers yep. and she missed the sideline. She had the whole court like, you know, coach can say there's 900 square feet over there. I'm only asking <laughs> that you find one of them. It is just a little long, so yep. Reese Van Oss gets to serve at 2014. Lawson rolls. Ellerbrock. It's a very good defensive team from Belmont. You, they, you're right there. Kristen sets. And that's going to be a kill that will be put away. Was that to Schumann? Yes, Mary-Kate has four kills now. I was following the flight of the ball and neglected to record who hit it, but I thought that's who it was. Here's number 10 to serve, Katie Mills, 5'6", sophomore. Buttlemeyer. And that's blocked out of bounds on the kill attempt by Schumann. Now she's got five kills. 22-14. As Mills will serve again. Ball rolls across the net and attempt by Suter. Buttermar hits, but gets to the ball of the barrel. Wow, nice dig. She is one of the better ones we've seen this year, isn't she? Yep. You're already here, we've watched him play today. Fry shots blocked, and she plays it, even though it might have been headed out of bounds. One of those reaction things. 23-14. Well, Belmont has blocked Fry pretty well so far today. She's going to come out and be replaced by Addison Bellman. Katie Mills to serve again. Good line drive serve, free ball, and well, the setter was there. She didn't want to play it. She just ran right by it, and nobody from her teammate reacted as they well, should have. Well, she's got to yell minor help. If yep. she yells help, you know, it's got to be loud and more than once. Because we, she might have. We can't hear her with the headphones on. This ball will be bumped over Gumble, and then Buttlemeyer gets a hit, but hits it uh, right to Mills. And it's in on the kill attempt by Mills. Was that not Mills? Who was that in the middle? I believe that was... Uh, was that number six? I think that was Gumbel. Gumbel, okay, thank you. 24-15. Belmont trying to win the opening set. The ball's blocked. Ellerbrock keeps it alive. And then on the kill attempt... Very softly done, but it counts nonetheless. And Belmont will take the opening set. They will do so with a 25-15 score. Second set coming up right after this. You're watching High School Volleyball on WOSN. And our scoreboard today is sponsored by Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts. Structure Outdoor Ohio, bring your indoors out. Opening set will go to the Belmont Braves, and they do so at a 25-15 mark. Chris Noodle has a stat page from first quarter set. Well, for Belmont, uh, 16 kills led by Mary-Kate Schumann with five and Lauren Ross with four. They had one ace serve, and that was from Lawson. Uh, they missed two serves and had three blocks, although they had many blocks that were not for points that OG was able to play and keep going so they've really controlled the net so far for Ottawa Glandorf they had five kills uh, Ellerbrock with three and Kaufman with two one ace serve and that was from Kreischer uh, no miss serves and no blocks I thought Belmont played about as well defensively as we've seen a team play here in the last month or so yes and the defense starts with the, at the net with the block and they really controlled that well but also just digging up the uh, hard hits from Ottawa Glandorf, and also the, they were able to come in and dive and get the tips and um, just played defense really well. 
It seemed to me, and, and obviously we're looking at uh, Belmont for the first time this year, but Sammy Kristen is listed as a 5'8 libero, and she seems like she's got a huge range. She, she got to a lot of balls and kind of has some long arms to get to them as well. Well, some players just have a knack for where that ball's going to go. You know, you watch the ball till it reaches its peak, and then you pick up the, the player and try to get an idea on where she's going to hit it. And um, a lot of that is just natural instinct, and maybe she has that. Belmont will serve first. That means Jackie Suter will serve this ball. Third match of the day for both of these teams today. And Fry's kill attempt is blocked. And there's that net stuff again you talked about. That's their fourth block. And again, Suter will serve. Belmont won this tournament a year ago. Today they are playing in the consolation match. I don't think that got over the tape anyway, so it's 2-0 Belmont. We'll see if, uh, after getting blocked there, we'll see if they, if Ottawa Glandorf tries some off-speed hit on this one. Set. Kaufman oh, tips. Is. Yeah, there it is. Good call. Katie Kaufman tips the ball in the middle of the floor. And she gets her third kill. 2-1 as Maya Ellerbrock goes back to serve. Good serve. Good save by the setter, too. There's Fry, but she hits it right to number six, Suter. And what do we got? The ball roll. Yep. yep. Prolonged contact. Here is that setter I, or libero I spoke about a moment ago, Sammy Kristen, 5'8 junior. Ellerbrock hits. Kristen gets to that one. The kill attempt was by Lawson. Fry. And from behind a 10 foot line and putting that way was some authority as Jackie Suter. It's her uh, third kill. Here's Kristen to serve again. And what is the 28th match of the year for the Decatur Belmont Braves? Van Oss has to play that one. But there's another good dive by Kristen to get to the ball. This is Fry. Another good dig that yeah. time by the setter. Yeah. No, excuse me. That was that was uh, Sel uh, Selking. Selking. Well, that was a play by your setter right there. Tush is turning into a lengthy point. That was Ellerbrock to hit. And Ellerbrock has to go play that one. Buttlemeyer hits in. Marley Buttermeyer, the freshman, gets that point. That's her first kill uh, in this uh, match. Caitlin Kimmett, who wears number 24, the 5'11". Sophomore checks in as Reese Van Oss will serve. Tip point at the net for Lauren Ross. Kill number five. It seems to me, uh, Chris, a lot of those left-handed setters go to the middle of the floor. She's able to direct the ball back towards the sideline. That's pretty deceptive. Yep. Fry hits. There's Ross playing that one. Set. And that went off a couple of hands by Mary-Kate Schumann. That's a sixth kill for the freshman. And once again, OG's going side out. Their first two serves. As Lauren Ross will serve this ball, her second serve in this rotation. Oh, oh what a dig. Yeah. That's blocked to the net. I think that was Fry. It's the first block for Otto Glandorf. Hmm. How about that? Here comes number 22. Clara Wishmeyer in the game. 
And also number 20 making her first appearance in this set anyway is Amari Young. And Amari will get to serve this one. Rolls it across the net. And then a point for Mary Kate Schumann. Seven, three. Katie Mills to serve. Buttermeyer wants to tip, but right there at the net, I see Schumann, and who was beside her? Looks like number 12, which is Gumble. 8 3. Mills again. Buttermeyer tipped, but did so awkwardly, went out of bounds. 9 3. Well, I'm not sure what happened there. It came out of her hand funny. Yes, it did. And the sub will be Addison Bellman. She will take Wishmeyer's place. Mills serves again. Ellerbrock played it. And I think she wished she wouldn't have. Yeah. Ball was headed a little bit long, and it's one of those spontaneous decisions you make. And then she kind of looked at herself like, I should, probably shouldn't have done well, that. Well, she needs to get help from her teammates to call it out or, yeah. or in. And that one goes out of bounds, so it's 10-4 now. Miss serve number three on the match for uh, Belmont. Well, are they going to sub? Yes, they are. Here comes number 13 in, Bailey Krause, and she will take the place of Marley Buttlemeyer. Bailey Krause will head to the back row. Suitors. Kill goes through the block, and they couldn't scramble enough to get it off the floor. Four consecutive times, an OG serve is turned into side out here in set number two. That's a statement describing uh, Belmont's serve receive. Uh, that's a gumble. There's a big hit. That one's by Kimmett. That's her first kill in this match. And just the opposite. That's the first time that Belmont has gone side out here in this set. I noticed, uh, uh, Chris, a lot of the young ladies don't want to serve where the basket is, and for obvious reasons, but the Belmont girls, at least two or three of them, serve directly underneath it. They have. They'll take a couple, a couple steps forward so that their toss is in front of the basket. A big hit by Schumann. She is what, having a really good set. What happens if that toss hits the net? If it hits the net, uh, it, it's out. I mean, it's 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 a violation on the server. Um, in theory, I guess you could you could whack it, but but you, it's it's a violation to hit the hit the backboard with the ball, or the or the rim or the net on, or whatever on a serve. On a serve. Yeah. Yes, correct. That's one of those uh, old day rules that changed. That used to yeah. be a, a, a replay. And now you're kind of responsible for that. There's a hit out of the middle by Suter. 13-5. Well, I suppose you could use the backboard somehow to your advantage. I, you know, if you faced the backboard and smacked it off the <laughs> board, and so it went over the net. I don't know. Can anybody do that? That's out. I don't know. I just know now that the server is responsible for that. If it, it, it's not it used to be a, a replay, but now you are responsible if you hit the ball, throw the ball up and hit it. Set and finding a nice spot on the floor with Suter again. That wasn't her fastball that time, but that was very well placed. Well, when I started coaching, uh, that would never be con a consideration because the backboard wasn't in the serving zone. The serving zone was a. 12 foot, uh, 12, yeah, about a 12 foot area over in right back. That's right. Hoffman pushed that ball. This is Lawson. And we're going to get illegal contact. And we'll go to 15 6. Belmont's kind of taking this one over right from the very beginning. First. Well, we talked earlier about Belmont having to play right away after a tough match and Ottawa Glandorf getting a lot of time off. It looks like maybe you'd rather 
just go play right away. And uh, that kill on the far side, that was a Bellman. I believe that was Ellerbrock. Was it Ellerbrock? That, yeah. Okay. Fourth kill in this match. Is this Ellerbrock to serve? I believe it is. Got bodies in my way trying to yep. see this one. But it uh, looks like, yeah, that serves pretty familiar, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. Look at that. That was a nice job by Ross. Played over by Selking. Buttlemeyer hits off a block, and there's a play in the back row. It's going to keep it alive, but it got up into the rafters. Really good play by Suter to keep it alive, but once it got into the rafters, it started rattling around. Couldn't make a play, and for the first time, OG scores on serve. Yeah, second kill by Buttlemeyer. That's his second time here, or first time here in this second set. The high toss, and she served along. 16 8. Alyssa Gumble re enters, plays the front row, and the libero will serve Sammy Kristen. Overpass was a little bit long, and Bellman couldn't get it out of the net, so 17 8 for the Braves. There's an ace, 18-8. Belmont's cruising, served this time by Kristen again. She served two consecutive points. That one was an ace. And that's, oh, they almost kept alive. How about <laughs> Kristen? About did, yeah. yeah, the miss hit at the net by Lawson and the Libero, Kristen came running in and dove for it, almost got it to go across, but the point goes to OG. Well, you don't want to pass the serve over the net, but sometimes it works out. <laughs> sometimes it does. Here's Van Oss. From behind the 10-foot line, a little roll shot that's played. Fry hits, and it's blocked, but it fell on the side of Decatur Belmont. That's just her first kill today. They've, they've done a good job of, when I say they, Belmont has done a good job of neutralizing her. Been very successful in that left-handed shot out of the right corner. There's an overpass. Buttemeyer wins the joust on that. Good tip by Lawson. And then Ellerbrock just pushed it. There's a... How many times now have we seen her done? How many kills does She's uh, got six Ross kills. Six and that kills. is uh, second most on uh, the Brave squad. It's your libero right there. Lawson came in with 60 kills on the seasons in the 79 sets. That was all those stats were before the two matches they played today. That's blocked. But if well, it's not, it didn't get to the tape, that's a four hit. So it's 2010, got him doubled up. Here is Lawson to serve. It's 20, a fifth miss serve. 2011. In this uh, match by Belmont. Haley Cole will come in. She will play for Lauren Ross. She wears number 18, 5'11", junior. Interesting to see who the setter is now. Well, she might be, be doing some setting, I think, Let's just see. from the way it looks. She's, I know she has in the past. She's in that stats. spot, yep. yep. She had 315 assists on the season. There you go. 316. <laughs> there you go. That kill was by Schumann. 21-11. And now Katie Mills. The only negative thing they have in this set is missed serves. Now four of them. Yeah, here comes Bailey Krause in. She will serve for Amber Miller's team. This week, OG has uh, Shawnee at home, and their final WBA, WBL match is on the 11th of October when they go to Kenton. Ellerbrock, there's that girl again in the back row, Kristen. And a set up and a put away by Suter. That's her seventh kill. 
22-12. The Segumbo will serve this ball. Oh, there you go, another missed serve. <laughs> Coach Crawl just kind of turned and walked away. Time, yeah. time to get a drink as you know, he grabs the, his soft drink bottle. Well, you don't want to let OG get too close. It gets within a couple points and anything can happen. So he wants his team to play hard right out to the end. Kill by Schumann. That's her 10th. 23-13. Schumann will, uh, Schumann will serve. Ellerbrock with a kill. Kill number five. 23 14. The last seven serves by the two teams combined are side out. And back well, Belmont can trade points. They can Ottawa do that. Glandorf no. can't. Addison Bellman will serve. Plays by Selkie. And then Fry. And she finally got one. Yeah, that's her second, but they've been hard to come by here in this match. 23 15. Bellman will get to serve again. Just a 5 4 freshman. A lot of years left to play in this OG program. Selkie gets it up into the netting, and they just have to free ball it over. And there's Fry again, right in front of Selkin. Kill number three, 20, all in this set. 23-16. Might have been out. Yeah. Ellerbrock had to play that one. Kill attempt from the back row. By Kraus, tip, good play by Bellman. Keep it alive. Here's Eller Brock, blocked at the net. There's big number 18, Haley Cole at 5'11 to get that one back. But she was right on top of that, way over the net. 24-16, and trying to serve out this consolation match, Jackie Suter. Guess what? Well, not that not way. Not this way, serves yep. along. They've missed six. Uh, serves in this set, so six out of the 17 points for OG have been on missed serves from Belmont. Maya Ellerbrock will serve for OG. Trying to keep this one going. And then kill by Delaney Lawson. And that will make it a 25-17 victory here for Belmont here in set number two to go along with their opening set victory, which was 25-15. This one will be 25-17. Interestingly enough, neither team called timeout in that set. Dayton Belmont, they will now go to 22-6 on the season with that victory, and they will be third place here in the Crestview Unite Leland Smith Insurance Invitational today. Ottawa Glandorf will go to 10 and 8 on the season. They are 5 and 2 in Western Buckeye League play. Some final numbers, Chris? Yeah, for Belmont, they had 29 kills. They were led by the freshman, Mary Kate Schumann, with 10, and Jackie Suter with 7. They had, uh, I'd like to add that Lauren Ross had six of those kills also from, wow. from her setting position, but they had six different girls with kills, three aces. They did miss eight serves and they had six blocks for points. They really controlled the net well. Uh, for Ottawa Glandorf, they had 14 kills, one a serve. Uh, they were led by Ellerbrock with 20, uh, excuse me, with five kills, and then Fry and Kaufman had three kills apiece, one a serve, and that was from Kreischer. They missed only one serve, but they had just one block. Our sponsor today has been Structure Outdoor Ohio. Our scoreboard is covered by Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. 
We appreciate that. Our crew today, Megan Sherrick and Lexi Waddle have been doing camera work, audio work. Nick Fraley is going to edit this back at the station. We thank the AD here as well. That would be Austin Fleming and the great job they have done putting this tournament away. Well, if you look on the floor, you can see Salina and Crestview, and they're about to warm up, and they will back with our championship match after this. You're watching High School Volleyball on WOSN. We're back at Crestview. This is the championship match of the 21st annual Lady Night Invitational, sponsored by Leland Smith Insurances. And in our championship match today, the Salina Bulldogs from the Western Buckeye League. They are 14 and four on the season. They are six and zero in conference play. And Tammy Gregory's Crestview Knights. They are 11 and five. They are six and zero in the Northwest Conference. My name is Mark Shines. My pleasure to do play by play. Chris, for the championship time, how about this? Crestview, because of the seven-team tournament, has played just one match today. Salinas played two, but here we are in a championship match. Well, with only seven teams, that creates a hole there in the for three places in the bracket. So Crestview's here. However, they did play extremely well in their previous match. A little bit of an upset, probably, and are here in the championship, and I'm sure they're very happy to be here. Uh, Salina, on the other hand, has played well today as well. So. I think this is going to be a great final. Salina has wins today over Norwalk St. Paul and over fellow Western Buckeye League team Ottawa Glandorf. And as Chris said just a moment ago, Crestview's only win today was over Belmont in uh, probably about as good a match as you can play for a two-set match today. Well, both both uh, sets went right down to the wire, and, uh, and um, you know, they're ready to play. I, you know, you said that Salina was 14-4. and four. That yep. means this is their 19th match which means they only have three more before the tournament. That's a little unusual, I would think. And they are all Western Buckeye League matches as well. Well, then they'll be primed to play all three of those. So we'll, we'll talk about their schedule as we go through this uh, today. Salina's on the left-hand side of your screen. They are in green with the black trim. Their libero, who is Allison Sweeterman, is in an all-black uniform. While Crestview, their libero, is about to serve, and she is wearing red. Everybody else is in the blue jerseys. Here's Peyton Berkey's set, and the first point of the game will go to Ava Kanapke. Sarah Gisagi will step in to serve. Crestview's libero is number eight, Ellie Klein, and she is the one in the red jersey as that serve comes up short. We're tied at one here early on. Two pretty quick points. <laughs> libero has to play that one, Sweeterman. And Libero just end plays. There's that center play we've seen so much of today. Actually, it was not a center, was it? It's just a left-handed play at the net. I think that was Gregory that got the kill. Kelly Gregory, who wears number three, and she is the setter. As well, we got two missed serves already yeah. out of the four points. And we're tied at two. It's a very young volleyball team that we see from the uh, Crestview Knights today. We'll de develop that as this goes along. Here's Brooklyn Bourne to serve. Here's Gregory's set. And that hit a net, hit a hand. It did not. It just sailed out of bounds. 3-2 Salina. Salina's coached by Phil Bangy. And Crestview by Tammy Gregory, two veteran coaches in our area. Here's Bourne to serve again. Gregory runs that one down. And then the roll attempt by Lacey McCoy doesn't go. It's 4-2 Bulldogs. Well, probably a bad choice there. Maybe she's just passed it over. Borns serve again. This set will go to Etzler, and my Etzler hits it long. It's 5-2. These seven points have been very quick. And they have been. Not much in the way of rallies as early on as Bourne will serve for the fourth time. Pushed over by McCoy. That's Haley McCoy. There's her setter making a play at the net. Brooklyn Bourne puts that one away. Each setter has a kill. And with that, a quick Crestview timeout. Our timeout also, you're watching High School Volleyball on WOSN. 
Today's scoreboard is covered by Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. 6-2 early on, Bulldogs. Key set, and good attempt, and somebody got in the net. Amelia Lutz tried to put it in the corner up here, and somebody on the blue team got in the net. It's I seven think it two. was Gregory. Here's Bourne to serve again. And that's dumped over by the setter. Good play, placed by Callie Gregory. She's got two kills now. Callie's a junior. Just one senior on this team for Coach Gregory, and in fact, one senior, two juniors, five sophomores and two freshmen. It's very young. It's very young. The ball's played over by Kanapke. And it has to be free balled over. Set by Berkey. That one's blocked, but it hit the ceiling coming over. Can't do that. Give her a kill then. So Kanapke has two kills. 8-3. Crestview started out two and five. Now they played a very strong schedule, but they were two and five since that time. They have won nine matches in a row with this young team. And lead their conference and trying to go down line and not able to was Lacey McCoy, that lone senior on this team. It's nine three. There's Jenkins to serve. And then finally bumped over by Berkey. That kill will go to Lacey McCoy. And that's her first kill. 9-4. Brings the libero back in. Also allows Nevaeh Ross to serve. Nevaeh is a sophomore with 16 aces. Coming in today's action. And that kill we can chalk up to Amelia Lutz. That's her first. 10-4. And Peyton Berkey will go to the service line as Evie Holstead will enter. He's a front row player with 75 kills on the season. Here's the left-handed Berkey. Gregory sets, and then McCoy puts it away. Kill number two. Crestview's only got four girls on the on the bench, Mark. It's, sometimes for these tournaments, you'll dress a few extra girls just to give them a little bit of, you know, possibly give them in, in, a, in a match here or there. Float serve. The libero has to come and get it. Sweeterman. And that kill we can chalk up to uh, Adeline Figley. 10-6. Here's McCoy. Another float serve. This one's an ace. 10-7. Again, very short points. Another one. Slina can't scramble around and keep it in play. Four consecutive points have gone away. Of uh, the Crestview Knights in the blue uniforms with the red and white trim. Set outside and going down the line and scoring is Amelia Lutz. Breaks the string and makes it 11 9. Will allow Amelia to go back into service. She has 35 aces this year. And on the overpass, the play at the net ends up being a point for Miley Sapp. It's 12 9. Let serves again. Block, but not able to control it was Miley Sapp. It goes back to Crustview. And the points continue to come real quickly. I don't like to be, belabor that point, but we really haven't had uh, a uh, extended rally yet. I think we're a little confused about checking into the match. At least Sunderhouse came in for Salina, and now re-entering will be 
Maya Etzler for Crestview. And Lacey McCoy will serve. Good serve. Born. Brooklyn Born. Second on the team to Lutz and Kills before today's action. And emphatically put that one away to make it 13 10. Yeah, that was drilled. Here's the libero, Allison Schwederman. The ball was blocked, but the kill will still go to Figley. Well, the ball fouled down between the blocker and the net on the Salina side. 13-11. The libero, Klein. And Klein has to play that ball. Tipped out of the middle, but the setter gets to it. Here's McCoy's play. Sweeter makes a good play in the back row, and what do we got? Two double contact. contact. Yep. yep. Thought it might have been 13-12. Crestview has trailed by six twice. They've got it back to to two. Or my mark, mark my sheet down wrong. It says 11 on the scoreboard. Maybe I got my wrong. Oh, there's a point. Let's see what the scoreboard says now. 13 to 12. Okay. I got off on my score sheet somewhere. It's 13-12. Crestview trying to even it up with this one. But not this time is a good kill by Holstead. Makes it 14-12. Six girls have kills now for Salina. Gisidi. And she gets an ace, 15-12. First ace serve for Salina this afternoon. She, Sarah had a 34 prior to today's action in 53 sets. Etzler. And then Bourne with the kill. That set went a long way across the net, Chris. It did. She pushed that a long way to get it there, and Bourne put it away. That's a ninth kill for Salina, but, but nobody has three yet. They're really spreading the ball around very nicely. Very balanced. That block takes place with Kanapke. It's 17-12. Timeout Crestview. They trail by five here in the opening set of the championship match. You're watching high school volleyball on WOSN. Check out the WSN.TV app for all scores and standings for more scores, sports, teams, and anyone else in the state. Broadcast schedules, upcoming games, social media posts, and more. It's WSN.TV. Timeout works as Crestview. It's a service error and cuts the lead to 17-13 coming out of the timeout. That born again, it was. I had to wait to let the bodies clear so I could see who hit it. Brooklyn Bourne hit that one, and kill, Brooklyn will serve. Kill number three for her. She leads this team with 42 aces. Second and kills with 149. Just a good all-around player. Well, good job nice keeping play, alive. Yeah. yeah, McCoy kept that one alive. And they're going to do it again. Bumped over by McCoy. Hey, McCoy. And then the put away by Amelia Lutz. 19-13. Crestman was on her heels the whole time, but had two good plays to keep the ball alive. Well, you can keep the ball alive with that, but it's hard to score points that way. Born. And trying to push it to the sideline was Lacey McCoy. That didn't work. 2013 Salina. Born again. Float served to the libero. And then Schwederman plays it. That's tip. That's a nice place to the ball by Peyton Berkeley. Berkey. Now she's left-handed, and she tipped that with her left hand to an open spot. She's got two kills now. Over by the sideline, made it difficult for anybody to get to. Eight-point lead in our opening set for the Salina Bulldogs. Hey, 
From behind a 10-foot line, this is a good effort, but Lutz keeps it alive, and then Berkey hits that one for a point. Back-to-back -back Peyton Berkey kills. And Brooklyn Bourne will serve this one. And the libero has to put it over Klein. Lutz. And that, it's either blocked back or got into the tape, one or the other. It's a Crestview point. Sounded like a block, didn't it? It did. Even with our headsets on, you can kind of hear contact up here. Josie Kowicki gets to serve this ball. That ball is blocked, but it's blocked out of bounds. Kelly Gregory tried to get that one and could not keep it in the field of play. It's 23-14. And to serve will be Samantha Jenkins. And it falls for an ace. A little bit of miscommunication. The ball lands. And the Salina Bulldogs are a point away from the opening set here in set number one of our championship match. Lacey McCoy hit that one. Lutz will hit this one, but it gets blocked. Oh, wow. Came from nowhere. How about Bourne to get that one. And Lutz is it still alive. It is played illegally. And with that, yeah, there we go. I was waiting for the final call. It goes to Salina, 25-14 on our opening set. Set two of the championship match coming up next. You're watching High School Volleyball on WOSN. We're back at Leland Smith Insurance's 21st annual Lady Night Invitational here in Crestview. Our scoreboard today is covered by Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. First set will go to the Salina Bulldogs 25-14. Chris, what kind of stat numbers in the opening set? Well, for Salina, 14 kills led by Amelia Lutz with four. Born with three, and the setter, Bertke, had three. But six different girls had kills. Uh, two aces, two missed serves, and one block. For Crestview, they had seven kills, led by uh, Figley with three, and uh, one ace serve. That was by Gregory. They missed one serve and had one block. Thank you for keeping our stat numbers. Getting a, a lineup set on the floor here as the libero comes in for Salina. That would be Allison Schwederman. I think we've already got Crestview set, and uh, with that, to serve will be Sarah Gisagi. I think a big goal for Crestview in this set would just to play with some enthusiasm, which they did not have in the first set, at least not like they did uh, when they yeah, played I Belmont. Say, I'm not saying that they were flat. There's Bourne's tip. A good play on the floor that time by Figley. But they were just uh, kind of like super jacked up, I think we said, against uh, Belmont. They and were. Oh, big hit. How about Brooklyn Bourne? What a day she is having. She is. You know, she's not very tall, but she really hits the ball hard and gets it past the block. Timing is very good, isn't it? She it catches, is. She catches the ball at its peak. Gisagi to serve again. And that kill will go to Figley. That's her fourth. Tied at one. And that will allow the libero, Ellie Klein, the sophomore, to serve. Good serve from her. Here's Bourne's hit. That in? A little long. Nope. Hit it long. Good effort by Figley. That time it went long. 2-1, Salina. Amelia Lutz will enter, and Brooklyn Bourne goes back to serve. And she will get an ace. Brooklyn Bourne had 42 aces. That leads Salina before today's action began. This is their third match today. She has those 42 aces in 53 sets. And what? It's like a green shirt was in the net. 
So the ball will go to Salina, as does that point. Makes it 3 2. Sweeterman plays. Book key sets. And then the shot by Kanapke comes up short to tie it at three. Figley serves. Lutz, and she hits it through the libero. Klein for a point. 4-3, Salina. Well, it might have been out, but it's a tough call. You know, the ball comes so fast, and you have less than a second to decide what to do. Lutz picks up her fifth kill. I think everybody would rather play it than take a chance. What do we got here? A sub in, and I think we're going to have the wrong server take place. Instead, the libero got out of there and allowed Samantha Jenkins to make a replacement and serve. <laughs> we got our headsets on. Somebody yelled in, somebody yelled out, and they waited. And fortunately, well, for a slide anyway, for a crush anyway, it sailed out of bounds. That's our third missed serve. Here's Kanapke back in for Jenkins. And on the other side, what's going on over here? I think they did one of those uh, flying exchanges, and they're bringing it back <laughs> to make sure they do it correctly here. As Maya Etzler leaves, and Josie Kowicki will enter to serve. But, and she hits it off of Lacey McCoy, 5-4 Bulldogs. She has six kills now. Tournament draws a week from tomorrow. They draw on October 9th. And tournament play begins the, on Tuesday the 16th among these schools. There's an ace. Sectionals are 16 and 18 in Northwest Ohio. Peyton Berkey will serve this. And missed 6-5. Guys at the station doing some serious work this past week. Where are we going? Soccer, boys, soccer, girls, volleyball. Let's get these tournament draws in and start figuring it all out. They finished up their flex games for the regular season football. Whoa, there's a hit. And got that schedule put out, trying to get some championship matches in the conferences, as long as those with playoff implications. And, oh, Bourne went and played it. Is it still alive? It is. Did the whistle blow? Well, Coach Bangy thought that the ball was on the floor on his side, out of bounds. And he might well have been correct because the point will go to the Salina Bulldogs. Now, when high school gets eSports, do you think WOSN uh, will cover eSports or I not? I can know. see you, Mark. Uh, uh, my thumbs are better than that. your thumbs, that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know how that's going to yeah, go. Yeah, maybe uh, we'll have a thumb off here. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we will. Okay, but that's Lacey McCoy. She hit the ball into the tape instead of getting it across the net. There were a couple blockers there anyway. It's 8-5 now. Salina. Let serves. That's a good serve. And they just push it across. Born from behind the 10 foot line. Just casual observation. Crestview struggling at the net right now. A lot of kills have gone away. More power has gone to Salina here yep. in this set. I agree. It all starts with the pass. See if they can get one here. There's okay, but not yeah. great. And then to the middle of the floor, the hit by Kreider. There's a kill. Yeah, there's a kill. We'll chalk that one up to Callie Gregory. She gets her third. She had 112 before today. Makes it 9-6. This is Gregory to serve. Kelly floats it over. In or out, it's out. Holstead misses the sideline, it's 9-7. Get that angle shot going cross court. 
Nice serve. Born. Good play by the libero, Klein. And then it goes over from Figley. That's blocked. And, well, we got somebody in the net. Is it number four? It was Lacey McCoy's follow through into the net on that kill. Gives the point to Salina. Allison Schwederman gets to serve this ball. Well, we got held ball. Ava Kanapke's kill was played momentarily, but then the momentarily lasted too long. <laughs> so <laughs> it's eight. Uh, it's 11 8. Berkey sets. That's blocked by McCoy. Good coverage. Bourne hits this one. That's also blocked by McCoy. Good play by the libero Klein, and they keep it alive. Perky sets Bourne again, and this time she gets the point. Well, that was a good point, a good uh, rally. Both sides playing well. Bourne picks up her fifth kill. It's 12-7, and with that, Salina, excuse me, Crestview takes their first timeout. Back in a moment, you're watching High School Volleyball on WOSN. We're back at the Crest Unite Lady Invitational in our championship match. Salina with a 12-7 lead, hence the timeout by Crestview. Allison Schwederman will serve. And that's what you do. You find Lacey McCoy in the middle of the floor and she puts it away for you. Well, good timeout, that's her third kill. Lacey will go back to serve now. Lacey has 14 aces. This season, and oh, that just short, almost crawled across. It's 13 8. Yeah, it just did almost crawl. And that's one of those things where if you're the defense, if you're the receiving team, you let up and then it crawls over the net and you can't recover it right down to the floor, but this time it didn't. Crestview has served six times in the second set, and four of them have been side out. But that kill will go to Maya Etzler. That's just her first today. See what Crestview does with their seventh serve of this second set. Schwederman plays it. Berkey runs it down. They're going to keep it alive. They do on the hit across by Sunderhouse. And then hit through a blocker by Figley. And That's they her do fifth score. kill. They do score on service. Here's Ellie Klein once again to serve. Born. Klein tried to play it, just too much there. Need a point, you go to Brooklyn Born. That's six kill. And she with and that, Lutz are tied with the lead in the match. Brooklyn Born will head to the baseline to serve. It's good all around volleyball players. Esther rolls it over. Berkey sets. And Lutz gets the kill. I'm kind of amazed at how Peyton Berkey can set the ball from one side of the floor to the other so well. Yeah, well, you know, she's been varsity player before. At least, I think, two and a half, three years as a setter. And she's very smart, left-handed. And hitting the ball through the blocker is Figley for a point. 14-11. Well, I was 11. completely fooled on that. I thought the, that was a good block. 15-11. Here's Berkey set. And the kill to the middle of the floor for Kanapke. She didn't set that one across. She no, set she that just not. a couple feet, and, and Kanapke was there for the kill. That's her third. 16-11. Salina trying to win this championship match. But not with that play as Etzler puts it away. 16-12. Etzler, after that kill, goes to take a seat as Josie Reinhardt. Excuse me, Josie Colwecker, Colwicky will serve. Born hits it to Klein. 
And they keep it alive. Let's with this one. Sweeterman plays it. It cannot go over the net. Oh, there you go. Yep. Couldn't go over the net on contact to the ceiling, but it came back and allowed Salina to play it, but then the ball goes into the net. Off of the hit from Peyton Berkey. That's a good hard fought point. 16 13. Kolicki serves. That's blocked. Lutz in, out. Lutz misses the sideline, and Crestview's back to 16 14. A little bit of momentum on their side. And the rally here after losing the opening set. Let's again, that one did not get over the net. It's 16-15, and we get a Salina timeout. Crestview trails by just one in the second set here. You're watching High School Volleyball on WOSN. Today's scoreboard is covered by Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. Good Salina, or a good Crestview run here. It's cut the Salina lead to one. And they get a kill right out of the middle by Miley Sapp. Just her second kill, but it was an important one. It was a great time, didn't it, to make it 17-15 coming out of the timeout. Salina, Burt Key serves. McCoy rolls it over. Schwederman will set this to Lutz. Horn goes and gets it. Lutz hits again. And another block attempt at the net, but not this time for a point. Haley McCoy couldn't keep it in play. 18-50. Eight, eighth kill for Lutz. Again, Berkey serves. McCoy. Lacey misses the sidelines. 19-15. Set. McCoy pushes, but pushes it to Lutz. We were playing ping pong. <laughs> yes, we are. Berkey's going to set Lutz. And that time her kill attempt is short. Makes it 19 16. Nevaeh Ross will enter to serve the ball. They has 16 aces on the season. Born from behind the 10-foot line. Lutz is going to hit this one. Oops, she's going to tip it this oh, time. Oh, what a dig. It was a great dig, but they couldn't keep it in play. Oh. Figley got it up in the air, but nobody could get to it. Makes it 2016. Lutz will be out of the front row now as she goes back to serve. Wiederman plays that, and it got up into the rafters on the kill by Lacey McCoy. That's Lacey's fourth kill, two in each set. 2017, Lily Sunderhouse will enter for the green and black as Callie Gregory goes to serve. Wiederman will set Bourne, <laughs> and she hit the antenna with it. 2018. Boom! Did she get the net? She did. Adeline Figley's follow through took her into the net, and that point goes to Salina after what could have been a big kill. Well, it's a difference between a 21 to 18 lead or a 2019, one point or three points. And an ace gets chalked up. It's 22-18. Tammy Gregory takes a timeout. We will also 22-18 Salina in the championship match. You're watching High School Volleyball on WOSN. Into action already. Crestview had the second timeout. It's a block at the net by 
Kanapke, but the point falls instead for McCoy. Timeout works as it goes to 22-19. Crestview has used both of theirs. Salina has used one in this set. Service by McCoy. That's block at the net was Figley. It's Crestview's second block. Looking back to see if Salina has led in this set. I think it was tied at 4-4. And Bourne is blocked, but on, her, on the Crestview side of the net. 23-20, Salina. Bourne has four kills now in this set. Seven overall. And the last time Crestview led, it was 3-2. Almost an ace. In fact, it's going to be an ace. 24-20, Salina a point away from winning the championship. And an ace to wrap it up. Sarah Gieske puts it away for her team with an ace, and it's 25-20 for Salina, as they will take the championship of the 21st annual Leland Smith Insurance Services Lady Night Invitational. 25-20. They won the first set 25 to 14. Salina will go to 15 and 4 on the season. They are 6 and 0 in the Western Buckeye League and as Chris said they have three matches left. They have Defiance on the 4th of October. They go to Wapak on the 6th. I think that's a match you can see on WOSN and on the 11th they finish up with St. Mary's at home. Crestview on the other hand they will have their nine-game winning streak uh, stopped, and they will go to 11-6 uh, and six on the season. They are 6-0 in NWC play. On the fourth, they will go to Ada, and they will finish up league play with a very good Lincoln View team here on the 11th. How about fa final stat numbers, Chris? Well, for Salina, they ended up with 25 kills. They were led by Amelia Lutz with nine and Brooklyn Bourne with seven. They had six ace serves, led by Sarah Gisigi with three, including the last two points of the match. They had four missed serves and one block. Uh, for Crestview, uh, they had 16 kills. They were led by um, Figley with six and Lacey McCoy with five, one ace serve. They missed two serves and had two blocks. Thank you for keeping our stat numbers and doing our analysis today, Chris. I want to thank our, our sponsor today. That has been Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts. Structure Outdoor Ohio, bring your indoors out. We appreciate their sponsorship today. Lexi Waddle, Megan Sherrick have done our camera and audio work today. Nick Fraley will edit this back at the station. We thank Austin Fleming, the AD, who has probably the best media room we'll be to every <laughs> single year yep. and does a great job putting this tournament together. We're going to try to snag a Salina interview before we leave today, but Salina wins this one in a couple of sets. You're watching High School Volleyball on WOSN. We're back at Crestview, the 21st annual Lady Night Tournament. Coach Phil Vangie from Salina Championship. Coach, three good matches for your kids today. Yeah, our girls came fired up. Uh, it took a little bit to get warmed up in the morning, but uh, we were excited. We knew uh, if we could win that first one, we'd play either OG or St. Henry. We've got a little unfinished business with St. Henry. They beat us last weekend, and so we were hoping to get a chance at them, but uh, played OG in that second round, and uh, just that's such a good, good team and a good rivalry for us in WBL. We just played them on Thursday, and so we we're, we're excited to play them again. They put up a good fight, and then, of course, Crestview here in the championship home home court, home team, and, uh, but our girls just, uh, you know, we've got a lot, of, uh, a lot of great senior leadership this year, eight seniors on the team, and they're just playing great ball. We're, we're uh, you know, we, we had our struggles early on in the season, but we're, we're peaking now, I think, and really starting to play some great volleyball. Really proud of our defense, just all day digging, digging balls up, and, and uh, that's our goal is to be the scrappiest team in the gym. That's kind of our motto, so. Coach, let's talk about your defense because many, many, many times today, Crestview went and was not able to score points off of the service. Your defense was very good in that respect. Yeah, we knew watching them ahead of time, you know, we know that they're a great offensive team. They've got big swings, big hitters. So our goal was to, you know, serve them tough, keep them out of their, out of their rhythm. And then, you know, once they, got that, once they got that set up, you know, just to make sure our block was closed, eliminate, you know, just cut down on their options of where they could hit and then make sure our back row was, you know, filling those gaps. And, 
man, they just did a great job. Our, our libero, Allison Sweeterman, she's just such an athletic player. She got a, a bunch of great digs. Um, Brooklyn Bourne, we transitioned her from the middle to the outside this year, and she's just done a fantastic job digging balls on that outside spot. And and um, so, yeah, it was a fun day. Uh, you know, a lot of good teams here and glad to come out on top. Having a, a good quarterback and having a good setter is kind of like the same thing, and you got a good setter who's really experienced. Yeah, this is for Pey our senior setter, Peyton Berkey. She's a fantastic player. Um, and, yeah, like you said, just a great quarterback for the team. Uh, and she's really grown just uh, as a leader this year. And, and so, yeah, third, third year starting varsity and, and can't say enough about her. She's, she's got a great attack with her left hand up front. And she's a smart blocker and, and uh, just, like I said, just a great leader and delivers that ball just where our hitters need it to, to put it away. She does. Coach, have a fun match. And that's Western Buckeye League. You got three matches left. Wapak's in the middle of that. St. Mary's in there. Kenton, you got three good matches left in the conference to go undefeated and win a championship there. Yeah, we're we're definitely we're keeping that, uh, keeping our eyes on that WBL title. Uh, of course, winning it last year means everybody's throwing the kitchen sink at you, and so we know we're gonna have to be at our best for for these last three defiance on Tuesday. We know that they're an uh, up and coming team, and uh, that that coach has really got them whipped into shape, and so uh, we wanna we wanna take care of business on Tuesday, and and Wapak's the other undefeated team in the league, and so uh, yeah, we're, we've been we've been eyeing that match for for some weeks now, and uh, and then of course St. Mary's that'll be our senior night, and a little bit of a rivalry game for us. So, uh, yeah, no no easy ones for sure. And hopefully our girls will be able to bring their A game like they did today. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Phil Maggie, the coach of the Salina Bulldogs. His team takes the 21st annual Lady Night Invitational from Crestview with two-set win over the Crestview Knights. You've been watching High School Volleyball on WOSN. <laughs>